Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to introduce the concept of electronegativity. So first of all, we're going to start by defining what we mean by this term electronegativity. We're going to look at how we determine or we calculate the electronegativity of a particular element and then look at it as a property that exists in a trend across the periodic table. So we're going to look at what that trend is and have a go at explaining why that it occurs in that way. So when we use this term electronegativity, what we're referring to is the ability for an atom of a particular element, whichever one that we're choosing, to attract the electrons of another atom and form a bond. Okay, so it's a, this, this, essentially this attraction of an atom for other electrons. Okay, now, but one thing that, that's important to be able to, to look at and so to be able to describe this strength of this pull is that it occurs as a property of an atom when it's connected to another in a molecule. And so in order for us to be able to determine the electronegativity of something, it must be able to form molecules with other atoms. Otherwise, we can't do it. So that means that there are certain elements in the periodic table that we cannot physically measure or determine their electronegativity. So particularly helium, neon and argon as noble gases don't form molecules with other atoms. And so that this property is meaningless. It doesn't actually apply in these situations. But for every other element in the periodic table, assuming it's not so radioactive or so unstable that it breaks down um, before we can measure it, that this is um, that they have this value. But so how do we actually work it out? Well, the reality is that when we're trying to determine electronegativity, we can't, you don't just get an electronegativity probe and you just kind of stick it into a sample of that element and see what it tells you. Okay, it's not something that we experimentally observe, um, or, or at least not something that we can set out to measure. We can use a range of experimental data in order to be able to actually uh, to figure it out. Um, and so, so it's not just something we just that's purely made up, but it's actually um, relates to the effect that an atom has on a, a, atoms around it. And so we ha have to rely on other atomic properties. Um, so one that's that that when we're only just going to introduce now is this idea of what we call bond energy. So being able to actually determine the energy that's involved in connecting atoms together to make a bond when we're looking at particular elements that we can actually make calculations that, that factor that in and then um, was developed this particular scale. <clears throat> so as a concept, it's been around for a long time, but Linus Pauling, who was a physicist in the 1930s around the time of quantum mechanics, was the first one to, to put a, a, a useful numerical scale to it, which we call the Pauling scale in, in, in honour of him. And so it gives these uh, elements of value that ranges from about 0 0.7 at the lowest to 3.98 at the highest. So some value that registers in between that. So now if we have a look at how electronegativity tracks across the periodic table. Okay, so first of all, so this, this particular image is kind of color coded um, like a heat map, I suppose you might say. So the more red it is, the higher the electronegativity, the more pale yellow it is, the lower. Okay, so we range from fluorine as the element that has the highest electronegativity in this top right hand corner, so 3.98. And then francium down in this bottom left-hand corner is the lowest at 0 0.7. Now, there, uh, we've been reading up on this a little bit, and there is a bit of debate to, to suggest that actually cesium, which is just above francium over here, is actually probably more likely to be the least electronegative element in the periodic table. Because one of the difficulties is that francium is radioactive, um, and therefore is quite unstable. And it also relies on when measurements have been done in the past to actually determine some of the underlying properties. And so there's a bit of a, the jury's still out on that one a little bit. Um, for the, our purposes, it's not hugely important as to which one. Um, but you can see this trend from top right down to bottom left. Okay, so um, we in, it increases as we go across and, um, and it decreases as we go down any given column. Okay, now you can see there's several of these elements that are greyed out for those reasons that we talked about before, that they either don't form um, molecules with other elements or they're radioactive and unstable and we, we don't have enough of that sample to really measure it accurately um, So that, for that kind of reason. All right, so if we kind of, let's see if we can have a go at explaining why we see this trend. So we just identified that it decreases as we go down a particular group, one of those columns in the periodic table. 
Now, the reason for that is that as we go down that group, remember, we're adding electron shells. You know, one shell, two shell, three shells, four shells, and so on and so on. What that means is that that, that in order for an atom to be attracting or connecting with electrons of another atom, that we have to get past its own kind of edge, you know, its outside kind of boundary. Okay, and the long, the further away that boundary is from the nucleus, the, 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 so the greater that distance is, the, the, the weaker the attraction of that nucleus to electrons of some other atom is going to be. Because that's what the actual the other electrons are going to be pulled towards. But if there's a whole big gap of, of electron shells in the middle, that pull is not going to be very strong. So we also say that this is concept of shielding, that these other electrons kind of block the nucleus, block this charge of the nucleus from, from other electrons to be, being attracted to it. So it's kind of, it's too difficult. There's too much in the way. And so that, that pulling attraction is weaker. Okay, so that the, the further, greater that distance to the nucleus is, the weaker the attraction is. And as we go down the group, that we know already that that distance gets larger and larger. But as we go across a period, we notice it increases as we go left to right, that is. Okay, so what we're saying is that this, this thing that, that we call the core charge, the actual, the, the amount of positive charge inside the nucleus increases because our atomic number is going up by one. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on, across, as we go across the row. So we've got more protons in the nucleus, but the same number of electron shells. Okay, we've looked at this as related to this idea of atomic radius, that it means that the atom pulls in smaller and tighter because of that attraction of the nucleus to its outside electrons. And what that means then is that we have a bigger positive charge, we've got less of that buffering kind of blocking effect that's happening, and so we end up, other electrons of other atoms end up being able to be pulled more strongly and more closely to that atom. So we end up with stronger attraction to other atoms' electrons, therefore a higher electronegativity. So fluorine has kind of the magic combination of these two things. It's got, it's got for its size, it's got a really strong core charge. We've only got, um, you know, we've only got a, a very small number of shells. So the the distance of um, another atom's electrons from the from a nucleus of the fluorine is not very high. So the attraction is really really strong. Um, as we get further down in that kind of area of the periodic table, if I just um, come back to this image, as we get further down, we've added in more and more shells, so that shielding effect starts to kind of, um, to really make a difference. Okay, but so when we're in this corner that it's, we've got that, that real combination of those things. Okay, so just to recap, we defined electronegativity as the strength of attraction of, a, of one atom to the electrons of another atom, that it goes from the weakest being francium or maybe cesium to the strongest being fluorine. We looked at how we, that we determine this based on a range of uh, properties that from how atoms connect with others in a molecule. And we looked at the idea that in the periodic table that it decreases going down a group and increases going from left to right across a group. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.